How y'all doing this morning? This morning, I wanted to go ahead and introduce the salts, salt and salt products that I'm going to be using here in the future on Southern Coastal Cooking. I've been doing a lot of research and stuff over the past six months or so into cooking on salt. So basically what you do is you take your nice salt block like this in the most basic form and you put it over your heat source or either you put it in a really hot oven you can either take it out, set it on the table, and have everybody take a little thin slices of meat and cook on the salt, or you can set this directly over the flame on your gas stove, or you can set it on the grill or something like that. You can actually even use this on an electric stove if you use a little spacer, and cook meat or fish or vegetables or anything right on it. Anyway, basically, I've been doing a lot of research looking into the different types of salt to use, the origins of the salt, different things like that. And what I've come to find is the best salts you can use are the Himalayan sea salts. Okay, the, the actual salts that are 500 million years old. They have the per perfect crystallization. Let me show you, they're like this here, and they have this beautiful rose color, but they, they have different colors to them just because of the different trace elements in them. But the best purveyor of those salts I find here in the United States is Posh Salt. All right, Posh Salt has been doing this since day one. They have a great company. They are getting their salt from the best source. Okay, this salt here, like I said, is 500 million years old. It comes from the bases of the Himalayan mountains, deep within the depths of the mountain. A lot of it comes from Pakistan, places like that, where this salt is mined. Okay, this salt has a lot better crystallization than some, for cooking and such than some of the other salts, like the Dead Sea salts and stuff like that, that have actually come from 21st century evaporation. The salts don't have quite as good a structure from the compression of the years and years and years, and they tend to break and be more brittle, not as well for cooking. Anyway, these salts, um, they come from, like I said, 500 million years old from the depths of the Himalayan mountains. They're mined out, okay, and they're brought over here to the United States. They're cut. They come over in big slates, and they have to cut them to certain sizes. You know, this is a very popular size right here, you know, for cooking. Something like this here that you can put over, you know, your burner or on your grill. Um, let me kind of start off about, I guess I'm going to just kind of talk about the company, the Posh Salt, and Miss Laura who started the, the company here, and just give you kind of an intro to salt. We're not necessarily going to get down to the nitty gritty of how, how to heat it and, you know, how we need to cook on it and stuff like that. So basically, uh, Laura, she's an attorney. Um, she's working with a lot of restaurants and people in the restaurant industry and that sort of thing. She gets invited to a lot of chef's banquets, different, you know, food network stuff and everything like that. So she was at a uh, banquet for chefs one night and she actually had a few samples I would imagine something like this, smaller samples um, of salt like this on her purse. And it was like in her purse or something like this, probably even smaller than this. She pulled it out and showed it to some of the chefs there, and they took it. And they're like, wow, this is really cool. And the first thing a lot of people want to do is you go ahead and you lick it. And you get that salt taste. Um, and they're like, you know, we want to cook on this stuff. Um, you know, we could use this. We could cook on it. We could serve on it. We could grate it up. And uh, so she's like, yeah, this is this really neat. Let's look into this. So she goes and she tries to talk to her client or whoever it was to see um, where the origin of the salt was. He couldn't remember where he got it from. Well, come to find out her husband was in the garment business for a long time. Had some connections in some third world countries you know, from getting fabric and stuff like that. Uh, they got a, a connection with a Pakistani man who actually had a connection with a salt mine over there ordered their first order of salt, and I think it was like 48,000 pounds, came in the middle of the winter and set out in the docks for a while until they had tried to figure out where they were going to store it. And I think they ended up storing it in their garage. And you can find a lot of that stuff on her website and in another article that I'll post in the description box uh, about the salt. But that's a really neat story how it got started. Uh, then it just kind of blew up in, in the food industry. You know, basically, you, know, you can 
heat this stuff up to at least like 900 degrees to where like I said you can cook on it you can sear really quickly on it or you can get it very cold a lot of people like to serve sushi on it this that's a very popular thing you can serve sushi but another thing you can do with fish is you can actually cure fish on the salt if you want to put let's say for instance salmon on the salt put another block of salt over it you put it in the refrigerator um, put it over something that's going to hold it up off the off the bottom and in something to catch the drippings you could actually make grab locks or locks and you make it very quickly than you could if you just poured a bunch of um, a rock salt or something on top of there so that's a very interesting concept and there's several concepts I'll talk about that the salt is, is really used for uh, you know drying dry aging beef this stuff in her salt is actually used in some of the best steakhouses in the world uh, they've gone in and they've taken this salt and bricked up the walls with the salt in the steakhouse in the dry aging room to where it's um, it's going to get that beautiful, beautiful uh, flavor in the meats. It pulls out the moisture and concentrates that flavor. For instance, um, I was trying to think of the restaurant which where it was. There's a Prom House in Chicago, David uh, Burke's place, uh, Prom Steakhouse. Really, really, uh, really exquisite steaks. Uh, they have one of their, their dry aging rooms, or their dry aging room is made with her salts. I mean, you've got a lot of kind of people using the restaurants, Mario Batali, Emeril Lagasse, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So, you know, dry aging beef is a really good, good use for the stuff. There's people who, of course, like I said before, you can cook on it. You can cook on on your stove. You can take it out to the table, do a table side, cook or have it actually put on the table on some sort of a mat or a board to where you're not going to burn your table, of course. And people can do like almost like a fondue, you know, when everybody's participating and they're cooking, they're cooking their little pieces of meat and fish and stuff like that. That's really neat service you know people are bringing a sizzling hot steak or a piece of fish to the table and sizzling and popping there on that uh, really flaming hot salt another thing some people have done they baked bread on the salt a guy's gone and he's put this in the bottom of his his bread oven it's actually baking loaves of bread on this salt and just coming out wonderful uh, that, that sounds like a great idea to me it's natural uh, natural antimicrobial so you don't have to worry about a bunch of you know build up or anything like that of, of germs and bacteria um, you think about salts originally uses back in the day of, of old people actually use salt to preserve meats and fish and stuff like that to keep the bacteria from growing to draw the moisture out so you're just kind of bringing that back another thing we might want to talk about as people say uh, a lot of times oh you know I'm trying to eat less salt I don't want my food so salty well, that's not necessarily the truth that it's going to be too salty. That's not the truth at all by cooking on salt. Uh, once you learn to cook on salt, for instance, if you cook your food hot and you cook your food dry, okay, on the salt, that means let's say you take a piece of fish and you pat it down to get a lot of the water off the outside or the marinade and you cook it on the salt that's very hot and dry. You're not going to absorb much salt at all out of that salt. You're just going to get a little bit just for that hint of flavor. But if you were going to put something wet on the salt, let's say um, you shucked an oyster out of the shell, just out of the shell with all the water on it, put on a piece of salt that wasn't that hot. Yes, of course, you know, through the sides, it's going to draw the salt out to that moisture. So we'll go over methods of how you actually do cook on salt to get the best flavor profiles. You can cook desserts and stuff like that on salt even. In fact, uh, Laura came up with a phrase, I think she said, um, you food your salt, don't salt your food. So you actually bring the food to the salt instead of the salt to the food. That way you're using less really salt, you're using just enough and you're getting that wonderful flavor. Now they do have salts that you can buy like this here. This is a, a demi-milled pink uh, salt of theirs. And that's uh, what it is. Demi milled means it's different sizes. You get some some small, small ground pieces of salt in there. They'll just dissolve right in the food just to give you the flavor. But you'll get some more coarse salt in there. They'll give you more of the texture that you're looking for. That little bit of crunch. Um, I could think of something like that. Let's say you were doing like some scallops, and you just want to sprinkle a little bit of that on top, and it would give you the perfect taste. But also you have that little bit of texture there. 
Another thing, I, I think I forgot to say in the beginning, is posh salts. Uh, what, what that stands for is Premortal Ocean Salt Himalayan. So basically that's talking about the origin of salts from the Premortal Oceans from 500 million years ago um, to where it's mined over there in the Himalayan Mountains. So that's really neat uh, that she came up with all that. And like I said, I've talked to her and on the phone for hours. I mean, we've talked about all that. And she is the salt guru, hands down. Go to her website. If you have any questions, you know, more than I can answer, you can always email her. She's got an email on the, on the website, and she really knows what she's talking. She knows everything there is to know about salt. Um, and this stuff is really great, and you can find it, like I said, in all the really fine restaurants now. It's on the Food Network. This, and I'm not talking about just any salt. This is her salt, the, the, the posh salt. You can find it on the Iron Chef. It's been fishing on the Iron Chef. Uh, like I said, Mario Batali, Emmy, Emeril Lagasse, all these people are using it. Uh, the Four Seasons has been using a lot when they're service, serving, using it as a serving tray and stuff like that. So basically, you're looking at something that's cookware. It's a seasoning and it's serving ware. So that's a lot there going on. It's been featured in Bon Appetit magazine. Oh, another thing, uh, you got your mortar and pastel, okay? All made out of salt. This, this here will add some wonderful flavor profiles to some of those fresh ground herbs and stuff. And I can't wait to try this out. This has been featured in several magazines, it's been raved about. So anyway, this is just a kind of a quick introduction I wanted to give you all to this posh salt that I'm going to be using. I'm so excited about it. I'm going to put a, um, a link to Laura's website there where you can purchase the salt for yourself. Oh, it's not very expensive at all. You know, that's another thing that people get in their minds, a stereotype about salt. Oh my gosh. And that's what I thought too. I was like, oh, you know, a piece of salt like this might cost me, you know, oh, $300. No, no. No, it's, it's not that expensive. And also another thing, uh, question and answer that you know, people kind of have is, uh, how long does the salt last? Yes, eventually the salt will dissolve down. I mean, it's it's, it's a mineral. It's it's, it's not, st well, I mean, it's it's something that, that's going to naturally dissolve. So after many, many uses, if cared for right, the salt will dissolve away. But they'll, let's say you drop it or something like that, you have a bad accident. Sometimes it won't crack. But let's say you did break it. Okay, let's say you get a broken piece. Like I had a little piece right here. Okay, I broke here for example. Take you a grater. Okay, this is like this grater here by microplane or something like that. You grate this thing down. Use it as seasoning. Throw it in the bath. Have a wonderful Himalayan sea salt bath. This, this, that's another great use for it. You know, so it's not you near know, loss if, if you ever get a broken piece of salt. This is great stuff, y'all. I'm telling you, there's so many uses for it. I'm so excited about cooking with this stuff. Um, I've got several ways I want to cook with it. Uh, I want to do it on the grill. I want to do it inside. In fact, I'd like to put some on a griddle and then cook some food on top of that, trying to experiment with that a little bit. I know I was watching the griddle video a while back. I think it's a, you guys got the, the griddle cue or, or something like that to where he's putting the griddle on his barbecue and uh, he's cleaning it off with the, with the sea salts and stuff like that. And I thought that, that was really neat. Um, you know, salt, like I said, it's another use for it, using it to clean a griddle. You know, using it to clean different things. It's, it's a very versatile, versatile stuff here. So, like I said, I'm looking forward to it. I uh, hope you all be watching because I'll have many videos about this stuff. And we'll work together. We'll, we'll learn the ins and outs of cooking with this salt. And I think it's going to be great.